you've been wondering, how does Eric get those words on the shirt like that? Bunch of you have asked, so today I'm gonna to show you how to do this. Because if I can do it, you can do it. Ready? Let's go. Make, fix, grow, cook. Garden fork. If you've watched any of Garden Fork, you know I like analog, I love printing, I really want to learn letterpress printing. But in the meantime, we want to put words on a shirt, right? I did this myself. Um, I'm all about failing to learn, so that's kind of a message I have. I wear this shirt and people stop me on the sidewalk and go, Where, where'd you get that? And I'm like, oh, I made it myself. And you can have the same thing. You could make one, you could make 10, and you can get your message out. So to do this is wicked simple. First thing that I do though, is a field trip to my favorite store. Ready? I am not gonna post any Amazon links for any of the tools we're using because I want you to go to your art supply store because they're local, you need to support them, and you also get a lot of inspiration, I think. Um, you just kind of find cool stuff in an art store. Let's go. <laughs> The lady right behind me, amazing tamales. She's here every morning, so you can get your breakfast or lunch. And um, they're really good. It's nice. All right, uh, I bought a couple more things, but that's just what you do in the art store. Go to the art store, you just, you'll just find stuff, and then you'll do art, and that's a good thing. Get away from the phone. You gotta figure out how many words you wanna use, and I just found that just buy more stencil alphabets than you think you're gonna need because once you do one of these, you're gonna to wanna to do more of these. Cereal box cardboard is very good for this and um, shipping boxes as well. You know, just keep a couple of these things. Careful, these are, um, well, you just need a really sharp knife, a craft knife or a Zacto knife. I like what's called paper tape. You can also use masking tape or blue tape. Blue tape, hold on. Here, blue tape works as well. This is wicked expensive though. This is a little cheaper. Um, I mean, use what you got. Save the cardboard that the stencils came in because you might need to custom make, you might run out of letters and you don't have to go to the store and buy a whole new set. You could, with an X-Acto, you could make a clone. You need another A. You could carve the A from here to here. Okay, little bonus tip. Stick around to the end and I'll show you some bonus stuff that I've learned, um, but let's, let's make a shirt. So a big part of Garden Fork is to just uh, go out and do stuff, go out and try co cool stuff. And I thought a nice shirt would be kind of a, a take on that, is to just get people to stop having excuses and to just, to just start. But we're missing a T, but not the end of the world, because like I said, we saved the cardboard carving time. So I just eyeball these. Um, you can use a ruler if you want, but eyeballing works for me. I like a narrower tape to go between the letters. So I just realized the size of the letters I picked is a little large to go right on the front here. So we're gonna put this um, on the back. I think it'll be just fine. And I mean, I'm all about just, just if you just get started, you're halfway there. I mean, I kind of had a, I have a hard time starting to make a video like this. And once I get going, then I'm going and I wanna finish. So um, see how this works out in the end. Here we go. So that'll fit nicely on this little piece here. And then I'm gonna draw an outline of this stencil on the cardboard. 
So the outline that you've drawn, um, oh, this, I gotta put the camera down. So we've done this outline. We wanna cut the cardboard just inside that line. So the stencil can connect with the cardboard. Um, I'll just have to show you how to do this. Make sure you're cutting your cardboard um, on a mat. No, make sure you're cutting your cardboard on a mat, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna be carving into your countertop, which would be a bad thing, okay? Cardboard on top of mat, then cut. I'm gonna go about a quarter inch in from our outline here. Oh, that worked kinda nice. All right, so that is our cardboard. This goes inside that. Well, let me, let me just put it down and tape it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the, the back of the cardboard and the back of the stencil. And so this lays in like that. It looks pretty good. Nice. Ready? Go! Don't move too fast. All right, there's a light rain, but we're not gonna let that keep us from t-shirt making. Uh, my neighbor's air conditioning is on, sorry. But um, go outside now, shake up your can of paint. You want a high quality spray paint. Probably want to wear gloves because you got spray paint, spray paint on your hands. Turn for me, okay? Shake it up really well too. some of the other ones I guess if I tilted it I'm a bit big about learning from failure I fail all the time um, the world's not perfect neither is garden fork but this um, is a pretty robust cardboard frame and you notice it's it's kind of short there isn't a lot of overlap so I liked on the shirt um, the paint splatter spray you can see it so it looks like a kind of like a construction sign or something I don't know I just kind of like that look this is a flimsier one. I did this on a manila envelope. I'm gonna take this to the next level and start working with silk screen and imagery and words and stuff. I love line of block, love stencil. Next step, silk screen. You want to let this dry like for a day out in your garage. Otherwise, you're gonna smell like spray paint at the party you're going to. This is, I love this. This is the kind of thing that you can do and I can do. It isn't rocket science. It doesn't take a lot to do. Why don't you and I do another project? There should be a video right here, something else that's cool and interesting, eclectic DIY from Garden Fork.